Welcome to question 9 of the 2015 Mathematical Methods Exam 1. In this video we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 9 we have an egg marketing company buys its eggs from farm A and from farm B. Let P be the proportion of eggs that the company buys from farm A with the rest of the company's eggs coming from farm B, which we could write that as 1 subtract P then. Each day, the eggs from both farms are taken to the company's warehouse, and we're going to assume that three-fifths of all eggs from farm A have white eggshells, and one-fifth of all eggs from farm B have white eggshells. For part A, an egg is selected at random from the set of all eggs at the warehouse, and we want to find in terms of P the probability that the egg has a white eggshell. For part A, it says an egg is selected at random from a set of all eggs at the warehouse, and we are asked to find in terms of P the probability that the egg had a white eggshell. So to answer this question, we're going to start off with a tree diagram. And the first option is that the egg could have come from farm A or from farm B. The second thing that we'll represent here is that it could be white or not white as its eggshell colour. So the proportion of eggs from farm A is represented by P, meaning that 1 minus P came from farm B. Now if the egg came from farm A, there is a 3 in 5 chance that it then has a white eggshell, which means there's a 2 in 5 chance that it doesn't have a white eggshell. If the egg had have come from farm B, there's a 1 in 5 chance that it has a white eggshell and a 4 in 5 chance that it doesn't have a white eggshell. So now the probability that the eggshell is white, which is what this question asks us to find, is equal to the two branches that lead to a white eggshell and we multiply along the branches. So, so first of all we'll have P times 3 over 5 and then we add on to that the second branch which is 1 minus p, and there needs to be brackets around that, times by 1 over 5, and that's the second branch that leads to having a white eggshell. So this is going to equal 3p over 5, plus, and then expanding the brackets, we'd get 1 fifth minus p on 5. And now we can simplify this slightly, because we have 3p subtract p leaves 2p, and there's still plus 1 on the top line, all divided by 5. So that is the answer to part A of this question, which asked for an expression in terms of P for the probability that the egg has a white eggshell. So from the examiner's report, we can see that 53% of students gained the mark for that question, with many students making good use of a tree diagram in formulation of a solution. Some students left their answer unsimplified as the sum of two products, but in this case, it was probably best to simplify it to a single fraction and we see that a significant number of students offered a final expression not in terms of P, despite the fact that that had been asked for in the question. For part B, another egg is selected at random from the set of all eggs at the warehouse. For part one, it says given that the egg has a white eggshell, find in terms of P the probability it came from farm B. So we can interpret this question as the probability that the egg came from farm B given that it had a white eggshell. Now that is simply equal to the probability of the intersection, so B intersecting W, and then we divide by the condition, which is the probability of W. So the top line of that fraction, which is the intersection between the probability of B intersecting W, is going to equal one minus P times a fifth, and we can see that from the tree diagram we set up before, divided by the probability that it's a white eggshell, which is going to come from the previous part of the question, which we just found to be 2p plus 1 divided by 5. And now to evaluate that, we've got a fraction divided by a fraction. So the numerator is going to be 1 minus p divided by 5. And then instead of dividing by a fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 5 over 2p plus 1. And now we can see this factor of 5 and this factor of 5 can cancel, which gives our answer as being 1 minus p divided by 2p plus 1. So that is the answer to part b, part 1 of this question. 
From the examiner's report, we can see that 28% of students got both marks for that question, and that most students recognised that this question involved conditional probability, but many could not apply it within the context of the question. Algebraic fractions were also not handled well by students in this exam. So things like knowing that when you divide fractions you need to multiply by a reciprocal become very important when we're answering questions like this. For part two of part B it says, if the probability that this egg came from farm B is 0.3, find the value of P. So in part one, we just found the probability that it did come from farm B if it was a white egg. So that means in this question, we're simply going to have the answer to part one which was 1 subtract p over 2p plus 1 is going to equal 0 0.3 which we can write as 3 over 10 so that we have fractions to deal with. So therefore if we multiply both sides by the 2p plus 1 and the 10 so that will remove the denominators and just leave one line to work on we'll have 10 times 1 minus p is equal to 3 times 2p plus 1. So now this is simply a linear equation to solve. So expanding the brackets, we'll get 10 subtract 10p on the left hand side is equal to 6p plus three on the right hand side. So just be careful there to ensure you multiply all terms inside the bracket by the number outside the bracket. And now rearranging this, we can add 10p to both sides and that will give us 16p on the right hand side is equal to 10 subtract three to get the constant terms on one side which is going to leave seven. So therefore our answer is going to be P equals seven divided by 16 when we get P by itself. So that is the answer to the second part of B of this question. And from the examiner's report, we can see that just under 20% of students got the mark for that question. And many students missed the specific connection of this part of the question with the previous part of the question. So it's really important to think about why the examiners would be stepping you through certain parts of a question and see if you can link them in any way or if it's intended to be linked in an exam.